Hey everybody, it's Tyler Binkley here and we are working on the boxed in section of conditional code. This is found in the Learn to Code 1 Swift Playground. And again, it's in the conditional code. It's the second to last one. So let's take a look. The challenge is pretty short. They're not giving us a lot of information here, which means I, I feel like it's getting a little bit more challenging, which makes sense. We are near the end of the chapter. So the, the challenge says, factor your code well with conditions, functions, and loops. Okay, so for this challenge, your character is surrounded by a grid of possible gem or switch locations. Figure out how to move to the right locations to collect gems and toggle switches open. You'll need functions, loops, and conditions. You know, all right, so when we look at the map, I mean, there's there's clear, clearly an outer edge, and it's like three, it's a three by three, a square and each tile has something that I'm assuming is ran. All of these are going to be random as this whole chapter has been. So we, we just can't, you know, go forward and, and say collect gem or toggle switch because we just don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be random every time we press run my code. And we know that the best way to tackle that is by using conditional code, right? Because we're going to say something like if it's on a gem, collect it. If it's not on a gem, you know, either move forward or maybe if it's on a, or, or else if it's on a switch, toggle it, you know? So uh, conditional code, if you, if that doesn't make sense to you, please check out my earlier sections, my videos on checking for switches talks all about what conditional code really is. Okay. And, you know, I'm no professional programmer or coder by any means. I mean, I just, I just teach this stuff and, and, Think of the most basic ways of trying to solve these and, and problem solve. That's really all this is, is, is solving puzzles. And uh, all right, so I hope this can help you out. And let's let's work through it as we go. And, you know, my very first thought is, okay, you know, there's three rows of three tiles. Now, certainly the tile I'm standing on right now has nothing. And I don't think it ever is going to have anything, no matter how many times I run the code. But like my first thought is, why don't I get to a row, like a corner where I can start and just scan all three tiles in front of Byte, go to the next row, scan all three tiles on that row, and then get to the next or row and scan those three tiles, right? And, and I just, I, that, that's my gut reaction. There's probably, well, there always is so many different ways to solve all of these um, sections. Um, so, you know, there's really no right or wrong answer here. Uh, so my first thought is, okay, and you know, even before that, even before I get to the corner, I usually like to create functions and, and things like that ahead of time. So if I'm going to do a function, the very first function I want to do is uh, probably collect or toggle, which is very similar to what we've seen in the past. And now I, you know, I capitalize just because again, like that's that's kind of this camel code that Swift coding uses where you capitalize letters. So collect or toggle is my function name. So now that will show up on the bottom row when we uh, are able to see that. Oh, there it is. I just created it. It's showing up right here at the bottom. Okay. And you know, my function body is, uh, well, I want to now. Here's where I want to set up my conditional code. And you might think, well, why didn't you just, you know, why don't you just do conditional code every time? Well, that that's a lot of work. That's a lot of copying and pasting. I could do if this is that, you know, if it's this, do this. If it's that, do that, and do that every tile. But that's going to take a lot. So by making the function, we can just call collector toggle each time, which is really nice. So here I'm going to put the if. Um, conditional code here. And I do want to tap on that and add an else if, because like all of the other previous sections, you know, using some of the clues from things that we've learned already, uh, you know, I know that I want to collect a gem if I'm on a gem. So first thing I'm going to do is if it's on a gem, my condition is if it's on a gem and the coding that I want it to do, if it's on a gem is collect the gem, right? Or else the next option the else if, if it's on a closed switch is all we care about. If it's open, we don't care about it, right? Then I want it to toggle the switch. So I just got to find toggle switch. There it is. And so, you know, that's been pretty basic, pretty standard 
uh, stuff for what we've done so far, right? And and now my next thought is, well, hang on, why don't we um, create another function, one more, okay? And hopefully this will make sense because I, I did this on the last section. I just called it row, right? And on that, in this function, okay, here's where I'm going to use my loop because they want us to use conditions, functions, and loops. So I'm making a second. You can make as many functions as you want. I mean, this function is, is basically to make it uh, less work so that every time I say row, it's just going to use collector toggle, the function that I made on all three tiles in a row. So, you know, for a row, um, well, let's see, I would want to, let's, like imagining that I were in a corner and I'm facing three tiles in front of me. Okay, the very first thing I'd want to do is collect or, well, we're going to make a loop here. So let me actually delete that and let's make a loop. And the reason why I'm making a loop is because, yes, I'm checking collector toggle on the first tile and then the second tile and the third tile. Well, why not just loop that, right? So I can hit four and make it the number three since there's going to be three tiles in each row. And then here's the nice thing. All I have to do is one time press collector toggle, right? Because it's going to collect or toggle and it's going to loop that three times. So that really, instead of making me have to do collector toggle, move forward, collector toggle, move forward, collector toggle, I can just do the loop and have it loop uh, three times and do that exact same thing, right? So um, that, you know what, the only thing I need to do here is add in a move forward. I missed that, whoops. So collector toggle, move forward, and then it's going to repeat collector toggle, move forward, and then it's going to repeat collector toggle, uh, move forward. All right. And there we go. Now I feel like I'm feeling pretty good about this so far. So I got two functions. All right. This function I'm not even really using except for the fact that it's being called in my row. So like I am using it, but I'm not going to actually be calling out collector toggle because I'm just going to be calling out row. So you can make a function and put it in another function, which is kind of cool. So um, my first thought is I'm going to get to a corner, either the top left, bottom left, you know, top right or bottom right. I'm, I'm just thinking the way byte is facing, I'm just going to move forward and I'm going to, and notice you have to be below all of these brackets. See for all of these functions, like that function, you can see what's blue when you tap on it. Right. So like I had to do this next function below that bracket. Now this is like my coding box. Like this is where I'm actually coding. Those functions aren't doing anything until I call them out, okay? So now I'm moving forward. I'm going to turn right, and then I'm going to move forward to get to the corner, and then I'm going to have to turn right. And if I run that right now, let's see. I should be at the top right corner facing the row below, and you can see I did that correctly. Now, here's where I should just have to type in row if I did everything correct. And it should just run through that first row, collecting or toggling, right? And why is it doing that? Well, if we just take a look at my step through my code. So, okay, this gets us to the corner. Move forward, turn right, move forward, turn right. But now look, row. Okay, it's saying, all right, well, this function says repeat, collect or toggle. Okay, which it's looking to see if it has to collect or toggle. Then it's going to move forward and then it's going to check it again because of the loop. So this is the second time through, and that's going to move forward, and that's going to try one more time, collect or toggle. And he might try to move forward here and fall off the map. Yeah, and that's because I have that in my loop, which, you know what, it's fine. Maybe it's not perfect. You don't have to be perfect. And I'm sure I could do this a different way and figure it out where that move forward isn't trying to walk off the edge of the map. But you know what? He's still there. So I'm going to just simply turn to his right now. Okay. I'm going to move forward and get to that top middle tile. But now I'm going to turn right. And my whole thought here, so if I run really fast here, is now I'm facing the next row, right? Like now I'm, I'm like zigzagging through the rows here. And now I can just press row again. And sure, he's going to try to walk off the edge. Let's see what happens here. He's going to walk into that cliff, and it's not going to allow him to. And now I need to turn left, move forward, 
and turn left so that I'm facing the last row. Okay, let's see if I did all this right. He's just running through his conditional code. Yep. And now I hit row one more time. And yes, he's still trying to go off the edge right here. And he's trying to run into this cliff right there. And he's going to try to go off the cliff one more time. But did I complete the whole thing and get a fantastic? Yes, I did. It says, your solution is incredible. You've come a long way. And do I still get the green check mark? Yes, I do. So, you know, this is just one way to do it. Are there a ton of other ways to do this? Yes. I created two functions in my other fun my one function. I have a loop and this is all my coding below. That's it. Thanks to the functions and the loop. So there you go. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.